Whenever you step out as a communicator, as a scientist, one of the most precious things to us personally as a scientist is our scientific reputation. Things are changing now, but when I first started doing communication, communication was seen as light and fluffy, an indication of lack of seriousness in your science. Um, someone even once said to me, um, not that many years ago, that a blog is seen as a charming eccentricity in an older scientist, but is seen as a dangerous lack of focus in a junior researcher. So in making this investment in communication, I also made an investment in my science to not only reach, but exceed or even double the standards for a person at my stage in terms of publications, research, relevance, all of the metrics that scientists use to judge each other. If we're going to be a credible scientific messenger, we have to make sure our science is credible as well as our communication. I have to say though, in terms of the faith component, when, um, when my husband and I came out with our book together in 2009 um, on climate change and what that means for people of faith, I was nervous. I was thinking that a lot of my colleagues would start kind of dismissing me because of that. The reality was exactly the opposite. I have received so much support from colleagues who say, I do not share your faith, or I don't even understand your faith, but I support what you're doing. In contrast, I would say I receive about 10 times more hate mail from Christians than I do from atheists or from other scientists, saying that you can't be a Christian. I've gotten a tract saying if you repent of your evil sins, then you might possibly be saved. Is it the sin of being a scientist or the sin of being a, like accepting climate change? It's accepting climate change because we've been told we can't be a Christian and think that climate change is true.